Isn't it funny guys how once we all start looking into the Pentagon and a lot of things start coming to light, such as their secret army, the videos of UFOs and God knows what else will be revealed in coming weeks. Of course, given that this Pentagon report on UFOs will be presented to Congress in the coming days, it seems all the talk is focused on aliens. But quite recently it seems there has been speculation and potential confirmation of a secret army of agents working with the Pentagon deployed all over the world. One of these agents was actually caught in Moscow back in 2013, although it's unclear if he was a part of this secret army or not. After all, it is supposed to be a secret. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what is going on with the Pentagon's secret army? Smash that like button and let us know in the comments down below if you think this is in fact real or just a wild theory. Now to clarify, the idea of a secret Pentagon army technically is just a theory as the government has never officially confirmed it. You could have said the same thing about UFOs, which the government denied for I don't know how long, until finally coming clean. So that doesn't mean the secret army doesn't exist, it just means the Pentagon, Congress and US government in general have yet to officially confirm it and until that happens, in technical terms, it's a theory. However, it seems after a two year investigation which includes reviews of past jobs and resumes, interviews with former employees and even numerous requests, specifically Freedom of Information Act requests, it seems Newsweek has potentially just broken the story of the century. Or one of them. If it turns out the Pentagon straight up admits to aliens, that will likely take away from the interest of this secret army. I mean, given that very few are even acknowledging it exists is very telling, instead deciding to focus on this report, which may or may not confirm aliens. And given that those who have seen the report have already said it doesn't confirm nor deny alien existence, well take from that what you will. But this secret army, well it may not be so secret anymore. Now I know you guys are thinking there's no way there's any truth to this because if it were exposed it'd be headline news all over the world and that's why I think it's such a big deal. It's not headline news and it really should be. And I will say wholeheartedly I will not be able to break down into detail the way the original article did how everything is run in just one video. So if you guys want more secret pentagon army videos or just want to ensure I'm not pulling all this stuff out of the wazoo, check out the Newsweek article. Alright, so the secret army, what's its deal? To no surprise, due to the fact that it's supposed to be a secret, there isn't a ton of information available. And even the information I got from Newsweek, I took with a grain of salt because, as I always say, you need multiple sources to confirm anything nowadays. Government theories are no different. I said what I said. So keep that in mind as well. Now with all that being said, when asked if the Newsweek article is real or has any truth to it, Pentagon Press Secretary John F. Kirby replied, I quote, I've seen the article, I can't go beyond that. I've read the article, I don't have additional context to provide on it right now. Usually when things aren't true, they just straight up deny them, right? I'm just saying. So as per Newsweek, the Pentagon secret army, also known as Signature Reduction, is made up of nearly 60,000 agents and it seems they cover all their bases. This collective of soldiers, civilians and contractors, most who travel to foreign countries under false identities, is so top secret that even the US government doesn't know all that much about it. Congress has never had a hearing on signature reduction and as one former recently retired officer who has asked to remain anonymous explained, I quote, most people haven't even heard of the term signature reduction, let alone what it creates. He also went on to admit, I quote, everything from the status of the Geneva Conventions, where a soldier operated under false identity to be captured by an enemy, to congressional oversight is problematic. I'm sure you guys have seen movies where an undercover spy disappears and no one knows whatever happened to them. Well it seems that kind of stuff may happen in real life. Newsweek spoke with a man who identified himself as Jonathan Darby. This name isn't the man's real name or fake name, instead an alias he used so no one could track who he actually is. Not his employers, not the enemy, literally no one. Darby retired from the army after serving 20 years in counterintelligence which included him working low profile operations in Ethiopia and Sudan where he would take on the alias of a foreign investor and businessman. Now he works for one of the many signature reduction contractors whom he asked to keep anonymous. Signature reduction, which again is the unofficial name for this clandestine army, relies on 130 private companies and numerous secret or little known government agencies for support. All of these businesses collectively make around $900 million working with the secret army. The companies are responsible for anything and everything, including helping create disguises or forging official documents, as well as even paying the secret agents true identities taxes, in an effort to make sure it seems as though they're continuing on with their day to day lives. It's not like this guy is a secret agent and everyone knows. It's so top secret, they have people fooling the government that these guys are just regular people working 9 to 5s and paying their taxes. Just like all of us. We all do that, right? 
Now, on a more serious note, this truly is a much bigger situation than people understand or realize. Although there are undercover agents who are working overseas in a James Bond esque type of way, there are many levels to this entire operation. It's believed the size of this group is 10 times that of the CIA. And on top of undercover foot soldiers, they also have a growing cyber intelligence wing, which, as you can imagine, keeps a close eye on any potential threats. Now, odds are you know that the NSA is already tracking anything and everything we do, all thanks to our boy Eddie. But these guys do some much, much crazier stuff. Stuff. For example, when special operatives need to get through passport control under a false identity, it seems aside from physical disguise, these guys can work their magic without ever being seen. As an IT expert currently working for WikiLeaks in Berlin explained, I quote, Imagine for a moment that someone is going through passport control. NSA or the CIA is tasked to corrupt change the data on the day the covert assess goes through, and then switch it back. It's not impossible. Meaning, someone with a fake passport gives their information to a customs agent, and someone is able to make it appear as though the identity on the passport is a legitimate person. There is also a company in North Carolina who apparently helps with this whole false identity thing. They do so by altering one's appearance using silicone face appliance, as it's referred to, among numerous other tools and materials to create a brand new physical identity for someone. Aside from the obvious of just changing one's facial features, this company could actually create an identity that changes one's age, gender, and even body mass. They could change Change your fingerprints by having you slide on a glove like silicone sleeve that has real human oil embedded in the fingertips so your actual fingerprints aren't traced. And this is straight from the Newsweek article. I quote Asked whether the appliance is effective, one source who has gone through the training laughs. I quote If I tell you, I'll have to kill you. That was directly from the article, so that's fun. Now, for the most part, secret agents only change their identity when they need to, aka when they reach their destination where they'll be going undercover. Which means the majority of the agents live normal day to day lives like the rest of us, and then when they're deployed to go undercover, that is when they take on a new identity. The ones who get new fingerprints and false passports, for the most part, are really, really, really secret agents like James Bond. Now, before you guys say this just seems like a crazy Hollywood film, let me show some more proof of the potential that this is all as real as it gets. Back in 2013, Moscow outed an American embassy employee as a secret agent for the US government. Ryan Fogel was accused of trying to turn a Russian intelligence agent into a double agent, and upon him being caught, it seems the media and the world had a laugh at the US government's expense. Upon Ryan being caught, he would be detained before being sent back to the US and exposed as the Russian media started to circulate the disguise that Ryan was caught with. Two wigs, four pairs of sunglasses, a map, a compass, a Swiss army knife, some cash, an old cell phone, which one source claimed, I quote, been on this earth for at least a decade. It seemed like a very amateur collection of a grown man trying to play spy. But as Brenda Connolly, an alias not her real name, who works for a small defense contractor that provides signature reduction with James Bond-esque gadgets explained, that ancient phone isn't so outdated. She explained how rather than an old looking phone, it was really a communications device which would be next to impossible for governments or anyone to trace. She went on to explain similar devices when activated could actually send encrypted data without anyone knowing or tracing it. By implanting spying devices into everyday objects such as rocks and bricks. In this case, Fogel could have loaded information on his Nokia looking phone, walked by a building which had a planted brick spying device inside of it, and have the information sent back home just like that. I'm telling you guys, we're talking James Bond level stuff. It's truly wild. And this isn't even the tip of the iceberg. As we can see, it took long enough for them to admit UFOs exist, after decades of downplaying and even trying to make it appear as though anyone who believed in them were crazy. So, who's to say in the year 2100 or maybe 2500, the truth about the Pentagon's secret army doesn't come out? Maybe it'll happen sooner, but I mean, this report was years in the making and we still don't know too much. Now, as always, guys, I would love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. What if the Pentagon UFOs? UFOs are preparing for war. Dr. Chaos said if we did went to war, it would be like an ant attacking a human. It's impossible. I I I I don't know. I, I know you guys got mad when I was like, maybe aliens aren't as you know in, as intelligent as I was giving credit for. And you guys were like, oh, they could travel solar systems and universes, you know, they could do this, they could do that. Maybe they've perfected traveling, but maybe they're still throwing rocks. Who know, like we don't know. I, I understand you guys might get mad about this, but it's like you know, we, we figured out from horses to cars to airplanes, but you know, we went from like 
sticks and stones to knives to guns? I feel like airplanes are a much bigger jump in transportation than guns are. Maybe not though, I guess guns are pretty powerful too. I don't know, the point I'm making is like, maybe they are more advanced in regards to transportation and that's it, that's all I'm saying. Mediocre Gamer said if they had the tech to make it here, it would be like kicking an ant hill, we would be doomed. You guys love the analogy with ants and humans and you know, but again, if they had the technology to come here, that's great. If they could transfer here, that's great. Who's to say they figured out weapons that are powerful? I understand you guys should get mad and just make assumptions, but it's there's both sides to it. Maybe they're very good at traveling and that's it. Maybe that's where they've peaked, I'm just saying. I don't necessarily think that, but I'm just saying. Data JY said historically wars never came from the sky. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. It's actually a pretty good point. Possible that the aliens are underwater and they just come from the ground, so there you go. All right guys, that's all for this one. I've been your boy Pepper, Mr. Spicy, which by the way, I need my mom to clean this shirt now because I just sweat in it, so. I'll make sure to get that done. Shout out to you, Bert. Was that your name, Bert? I think it was Bert. I don't know. Anyways, guys, I've been Pepper. We'll see you guys soon.